What's up, Rap Critic? What's going on? Nothing. Oh, shucks, Muse. It's such a boring day. I wish there was something to do. You know what? You want to go to MAGFest? MAGFest? Yeah! yeah! Oh my god! Did we just jump cut into MAGFest? How ridiculously contrived! <sighs> well, uh, did you make reservations? No. Did you book the room? No. Who's room is this? I don't know. Are you registered? Uh, uh, let's just start a review before anyone notices. <laughs> Soulja Boy, the movie. This actually happened. Was there honestly no one else to make a documentary about? For God's sake, what about Eminem? He hasn't had any documentary about him, but this guy gets one? He's barely been around for five years. I'd expect a Lady Gaga documentary before this. At least he'd be promising. What has this guy done? Let's not prolong this any further. From the makers of documentaries about Tupac and Biggie Smalls, and I'm not joking here, the next step was, of course, this guy. So let's get right into this. So we start off with... Oh god, no. The camera then pulls out to show that it's a YouTube, or R-Tube, video, and... Please don't tell me that's how they're going to narrate this. What? So they could get Tupac to narrate his own movie, and he was dead! But they couldn't get Soulja Boy? What the hell was his excuse? Even so, was nobody else available? That just makes it look like nobody wanted their voice to be associated with the cinematic punchline. Okay, so we get a typed narrator who is supposed to be Soulja Boy, who tells us that he indeed has a movie. I can see how useful this narration will be. He then continues by telling us that ever since he was young, he knew that he wanted to get paid. Not to do anything great, mind you, but just to get paid. How fucking revolutionary. As a kid, he saw people got a paycheck for their talent and said, Hey, I want to do that too. That's not a revelation. That's just figuring out how the damn world works. He then goes on. I'm sorry, I can't take this song anymore, especially live. Can we, can we just get to the story? We then get into the story, starting off with Soulja Boy's dad telling us that it was pretty much a deadbeat for 11 years of his life, but he wanted to make things right. So yeah, for the person responsible for Soulja Boy having access to music, look no further than his father. Hey, where's his mom in all this? Doesn't she have anything to say? You'd think she'd kind of be important, seeing as how she was the one that raised him. We then cut to Soldier Boy. Wait, so Soldier Boy gets interviewed for the movie, but he can't be bothered to narrate it? It just was the time was right, man. I was growing up, man. I needed, you know, certain things that my mama can provide for me than my daddy could. Well, I know why they didn't want him to narrate it. Jeez, dude, what are you doing? Eating it on the computer while in an interview for a movie about you? I guess someone's too cool to care. Damn Slippy. What? We then cut to... We then cut to Soldier Boy's manager, explaining how Soldier Boy got in touch with him. Everybody trying to move to Atlanta to get a deal. And Soldier's from Atlanta, he can get on. He came to Mississippi. And got with me, he got signed. So that's, that proves to you, it ain't where you're from, it's where you're at, and how hard you grind, and how hard you want to dream, and how hard you go out to. No, it's not. It's all about who you know, as you've just proven, because the only reason you knew who he was was because he was the son of your friend from college. Soulja Boy then shows off his car with spinning rims while still living in a crappy neighborhood with a crappy camera, because we all know what's most important. I'm not into computers, I'm into money. Can't you just... Pretend that people shouldn't put artists in quotation marks whenever they mention you. Then, Soulja Boy shows off useless crap, like having 92,000 friends on MySpace. Because you know, Tila Tequila had 2 million friends on MySpace. And we all see how important she is. Who? Exactly. He had went from 17,000 friends to like 300 some thousand friends in like 10 months. And how he was doing it, every song he made, he would call his website and MySpace out. Every song. Okay, I highly doubt he was the first person to use such a tactic, but whatever, we're advancing the story. The concept of the video actually uh, is inspired by a true story. It's how his um, mentor, uh, Mr. Carly Pop, discovered Soulja Boy through his son, who was on the internet, and via the internet, his son introduced Carly Pop to this phenomenon known as Soulja Boy. The true, inspiring story about a man and his dance. His um, mentor, uh, Mr. Kali Park, discovered Soulja Boy. His mentor, Kala Park? The guy who wasn't even in the picture until just now and signed him after he was already proven to be successful on his own? He's the mentor? Yeah, because I'm sure those other guys didn't do much. 
We didn't cut the people performing the great dance. And wait, where did all this come from anyway? What? Well, this is the main reason why he's famous. Can you give us a little insight into it? This is his movie. What inspired it? How and why did he come up with it? I mean, sure, I just talk it up to a bunch of already existing moves tweaked together for the sole purpose of selling a dance instead of actual artistry, but will he at least tack on some backstory to it? And wait, what about all the controversies surrounding those Superman and Super Soap That Ho lyrics? Are you ever going to get into that or at least clarify what you're talking about? Nope. Let me tell you about the life and how you live when you was gone. Every single place you go, people run. Screw that song and that fake Soldier Boy text. Well, if we skip every song we don't like, this review is gonna be like five fucking minutes. Good point. Then we get an interview with his close friend Arab talking about how they met. Back in class. And then one day, we just started talking, started messing with each other, started talking about each other, joining on each other. And then after that, we just been friends. Fuck that guy! He's just a hype man! We want Soldier Boy! We want Soldier Boy! I, I put a rap through certain tests every day just to just to test where his mind at. Sometimes we might be walking, be like, hey, rap, rap right now. See what, you know, just to test where his mind at. Isn't a rap just there to make you look good? What does he have to prove? And how do you plan on keeping him on his toes? Secret attacks? Yo, well, a rap, I really. Like how did you come up with the name Soulja Boy? The name Soulja Boy was given okay. to me by my mom. You know what I'm saying? That was my childhood nickname. That was she always called me. So once I started rapping, I just started calling myself Soulja Boy Tell me. That was it. Prepare yourself, people. That's the last significant piece of information we're going to get for a while. He doesn't even bother to explain why he decided to turn his name into a sentence that's addressing himself. And what are you supposed to be telling them? The name of your website? Of course, these are the type of questions that would be answered in, oh, I don't know, a fucking documentary! You feeling about all them interviews, man? You like that shit? No. I do not like doing interviews. I don't like the one I'm doing right now. I'm just doing this because I owe you one. Oh, excuse him! He doesn't like doing interviews! Excuse him! for eating and checking his Facebook updates. He doesn't like doing interviews. I mean, it's no big deal. It's just a movie about your fucking life, you ungrateful ass. We then introduced the guy who has to deal with looking at Soldier Boy's crap all day, Flex the cameraman. He just is always really, and still is, really just impatient, you know, mind, very focused on where he was going. I think because he lives a digital life, you have that rambunctiousness of a young teenager, but then on steroids, because you actually got the money and, and the power to go where you're trying to go. That sounds terrible. He sounds like an irresponsible kid who never got the principles of discipline and won't due to a sudden accumulation of obscene riches. I feel like that revealed more than anything else. Ever since Soulja Boy been rapping, he been rapping. Stacks on deck. Stacks on deck in time, stacks on deck ENT label, all kinds of stuff, stacks on deck records. He just been rapping stacks on deck. But there's too many people out there, you know, rapping stacks on deck too. So. He ain't gonna try to copy nobody, he ain't gonna try to get sued or none of that. So we named it S.O.D. That stands for Stacks on Deck. So what you're saying is, Stacks on Deck is an uncreative title that plenty of people have already used, so you had to turn it into an anagram just to use it. Insightful. He then gives us the mission statement for his group. We want to take your money, we want to take his money, and we want to take her money. And whatever we gotta do to get your money, we will do it. That sounds like a robbery. Ever bought a crappy album? They then talk about being on tour and doing different types of shows. Man, the hood shows be super crunk. The arena shows, they be alright. That's right, the shows for the people are where it's at. The shows for the common man. The... The, uh... The <clears throat> anyway. I keep to myself, you know, on the road. There's really no time for all that, you know, trying to talk to girls and try to get girls and all that right there, because, you know, sexual transmitted diseases out there, man, so. A little hard to believe, but whatever, at least he's trying to set a good example for the younger fans. You then see some more footage of Soulja Boy performing, which looks a lot funnier than I thought it would. It's been a hard day's night. I should be sleeping like a lot. We then actually get to something happening, where their tour bus's heating system craps out. Soldier Boy rightfully raises hell. Interscope, y'all wrong, man. All kinds of part music. Just one CSOD Money Gang, my label won't get down like that, do we, y'all? No. There's some artists out there who are not doing half of what I'm doing. They got brand new, fresh tour buses with their face on them. Why can't I have one? I feel your conviction. We then cut to Soulja Boy, well, being an asshole to a random stranger in a hotel. It's four in the morning. 
<laughs> Somebody's woke now. At four in the morning, somebody's woke. Yeah, that was me kicking them doughs. Kick a dough, nigga. Kick a dough, nigga. Everybody, everybody on the floor. Now, unless that's an actual song that you made, I don't see why you just showed us that. In fact, where is anything in this movie that actually talks about your songs? Where is anything that involves where you got inspired to make music? What gives you motivation for certain songs? Or the monumental meetups with legendary artists? Or anything that isn't just about, look at how much money I have because I sold a lot of records? We haven't even seen a music video clip in over 20 minutes, for God's sake. She got a dope, hey! Oh yeah, I forgot. Your music is devoid of any creativity, so a documentary about you would be nothing but lame tour shows and showing off how much money you have. Finally, we get to the recording of Soldier Boy's second album. And hey, he had a stupid dance with the lead single off his first album, so why not try to catch lightning in a bottle again? Except it didn't, because it only got to number 40 on the Billboard charts, and barely was as overplayed as Crank That. Thank God. Remember that album that went platinum and that cartoon that only had one episode before it got canceled and that video game that still hasn't happened? Oh, and remember that Soldier Boy challenge where he was supposed to own the internet and beat a whole bunch of gamers on the internet? Yeah, didn't Screw Attack accept that challenge? Oh yeah, you never responded to that, did you? You know, listening to the chorus, apparently Soldier Boy must think the key to a successful song meant leaving out as many consonants and vowels to the chorus as possible. Very well! You! What the hell does that mean? Well, uh, it, of course it means you are also invited to do this dance. Oh.